are um, risk in the United States, uh, safety codes you have to follow each state, um, operational codes for fire protection, we talked about those. Okay, you, you'll actually have a fire inspector come in and inspect your property and go through the risk assessment. They'll give, you'll have blueprints and layouts of the whole hotel that go into your online risk assessment um, access. A lot of companies print out books for you now. You have to have them available. Um, so this is talking about construction strategies, which none of us are going to be building hotels necessarily. Um, but these are things that your fire marshals will look for for risk assessment. Okay, hazardous materials. Uh, if you, some of you should research LEED certification. I told you that's very important in your certification and training. I used to teach a whole class on sustainable business. LEED certification is environmental safety of hotels, which includes recycling. So your soaps, your shampoos, reuse of towels, plastic going to paper, recyclable wear. It's a whole process and it's not just one area of the hotel. If they look at the whole hotel and if you come, become LEED certified, they look at your construction. Uh, if you become LEED certified, you get a huge sign that goes on the um, kiosk of your hotel. Okay. Your hotel uh, GM and your assistant GM are responsible for all areas of the hotel. Uh, when we had uh, full maintenance warehouse in um, Kaloa Landing, it wasn't just a small area. There was an area, we had certified air conditioning repair people, certified plumbers, um, full maintenance area. So we had maintenance sheds out on the property. We had gasoline um, storage tanks for equipment. We had golf carts. We had equipment everywhere all over the property that are part of these risk assessment. Now the risk assessment is not just for maintaining safety of your guests, it's also your employees and what things are in process um, for dangers in that hotel, okay? When construction is done on a hotel, it has to be done by a licensed contractor that can do commercial work. Permits have to be pulled. They have to be displayed. All of OSHA procedures have to be followed. Employees can follow file a um, OSHA complaint, and then you'll have to uh, uh, respond to this complaint as a manager and they'll actually send out people to inspect your, your hotel, okay? Carbon monoxide inspectors now have to be in hotel. Uh, now they make them so that they're part of a fire inspection system, okay? Ventilation, okay? Most of all this that we're going through now is construction. Uh, There was an issue in Mexico a few years ago where a family uh, died and it took them months to figure out what happened. They died in their sleep. They were using an old pesticide that's been banned in America and they were using it to spray to kill roaches and bugs around the hotel property. It was banned in America because they were starting to see birds falling out of the sky because birds would be on their perch of uh, wires and trees and this pesticide was emitted through airplanes in the air. They started finding out that this is a highly toxic chemical. And two years ago in Mexico, a whole family uh, died staying in a hotel and they linked it to the pesticides got into the air system into their hotel room. And while they were sleeping, they all died in their sleep. So you have to be very aware when you're doing international travel. And that's why it's highly recommended you stay in name brand hotels like Marriott, Hilton, Hyatt, all these type of hotels. Okay, this just goes through your sprinkler suppression system that's going to be inspected by your fire marshal. And they do this quarterly or annually. They come through and they'll, they'll replace your tags. They'll give you updated certificates. It's just like your elevators get inspected by the elevator companies. Okay, 
OSHA, um, Occupational Safety Hazard Association. Uh, this is for all major companies for construction, hotel, work facilities. It, it's a protection of all employees, Occupational Safety Hazard Association, and it follows up on all of these things that we have discussed as far as construction, fire, um, carbon monoxide, work environment. Okay. Okay, potability of water, which, uh, you know, there's some problems in Detroit and Grand Rapids with lead in the water. Okay. People are going to jail over that. They're, they're putting government officials in the jail because the water was not, um, they knew about it and they did, people got uh, killed, poisoned. Okay, Legionnaire's disease. Legionnaire's is a virus we talked about in sanitation. They found out uh, in a Home Depot, they put water in a Whirlpool tub and the Whirlpool tub did not have any chemicals in it in the Home Depot and they kept it running and a bacteria grew. And as people walked by this piece of equipment in the store while they were shopping, they contracted this virus. Some people went home and got sick. I think about 12 people died and they could not figure out in this Pennsylvania area why people were dying with Legionnaire's disease. It took a month, but they linked it to the Home Depot store. In hotels, they've linked it to air conditioning filter systems that were not cleaned properly. So you need to make sure that your maintenance engineers and who's ahead of your maintenance has cleaning schedules that you as a manager review them. You don't just take them by their word. You meet with them one-on-one -on -one and go through these cleaning schedules, dates, times, et cetera. Okay, backup generators for your hotels, flashlights, batteries, as I told you, in Kaloa Landing, we had a major um, hurricane. We thought we'd lose power, so we had all kinds of lanterns, back, everything was battery operated. Um, you wanna have all these supplies available and stored in your storage area. Being the director of food and beverage operations, I had a storage area that was huge area off the catering uh, convention center. We put cages in and we filled them with flashlights, batteries. I always had pallets of black backup water. We're on an island out in the middle of the Pacific. You're not going to just say, hey, let's go down to Costco or whatever store and get water because everybody on the island is going to the same store. So I made sure all my vendors, and I had cages of this all locked up and ready to go only for emergencies. And we'd rotate them out uh, during the year for events and then restock them. So they weren't just sitting there for years on that. Elevators inspections, we talked about that, making sure the tags are up to date, no chains or anything on the uh, doors of the guests. Okay, we talked about the computer and um, IT hacking. We talked about HACCP, you had that in sanitation course. As a GM or assistant f &B, you need to walk through food and beverage. You need to know what's going on. You need to let them know that you know you're in control and what's happening. A lot of uh, f and directors and um, executive chefs uh, feel that the GMs and the assistant GMs don't know what's going on in food and beverage and uh, they just shun them or brush it off. Okay, so make sure you, you know that and you understand all that. Okay, I have uh, a couple videos. The first video I want to show to you is um, what just recently happened in Cancun. Um, these scenarios are happening in America. We all know in Las Vegas, five years ago, around that time, 75 people were killed in a mass shooting. All right, so you need to have in your risk assessment plan a strategy, just like all colleges, all schools now have uh, a plan in place for mass shootings. Okay, so um,
we with breaking news, a deadly shooting at a resort in Cancun. The new image is just in. Check this out. Frightened tourists packed into the lobby of a Hyatt hotel after police say suspected drug dealers opened fire on the beach. Guests rushing inside with video showing several people hiding in the hotel's basement as well. Other guests barricading themselves inside of their rooms. You can see that right there. Police say two people who are presumed to be those drug dealers are dead. We have NBC News national correspondent Miguel Almaguer, who's live on set with us here on to at Top Story. So, Miguel, walk us through this. What, what is Mexico law enforcement saying right now? Well, Tom, it's still a developing situation, but here are some details that we do know tonight. We know the attorney general of Mexico says there was an altercation between several drug dealers on a beach when shots were fired near the Hyatt Zia Riviera Cancun Resort. A local news outlet is reporting at least eight gunmen then entered the hotel carrying long guns. The commotion sent tourists scrambling, as you can imagine. Images coming into NBC News show some taking cover in the resort's corridors and later guests gathering in the hotel lobby, reuniting with family. Mexico's Secretary of Public Security says two people died, as you mentioned, both believed to be drug dealers. At this hour, it appears no tourists were injured, and the gunfire, we believe, Tom, is over. And Miguel, one of the reasons why we're leading the broadcast with this is because, one, it's very terrifying. A lot of Americans vacation there. But this is not new. There was a recent shooting where tourists were caught in the crossfire as well. Yeah, just a few weeks ago, Tom. This is something that happens from time to time. Of course, Mexican police try to keep this strip of Cancun incredibly safe. That area depends on American tourists and tourists from all over the country. So it is an important area, and they have more security there tonight and tomorrow, Tom. Yeah, and then I have to ask you, what is the hotel exactly saying about all this? Because these resorts thrive on tourism. It's essentially the only industry in Cancun. The, ho the hotel statement is fairly limited, but what they're saying right now is that their guests are their top priority. Safety is their top priority. That's something they'll be addressing in the days to come. They're making the point that this shooting did not happen at the hotel, but the guests ran there for safety, Tom. All right, Miguel Almaguer, leading us off tonight here on Top Story. Miguel, we thank you for that. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app. Um, well, one thing I noticed is that um, in the video, no, do you, any of you notice anyone from the hotel talking to the people? Do you notice anyone on a microphone or anything taking control of the situation? I didn't see anyone there uh, taking control of the situation. Um, you know, when we were in Hawaii and we had, we knew the hurricane was going to be really bad. We had FEMA actually staying in our hotel. That's how bad they thought it was going to be. And it wasn't going to be where it hit just one island. It was going to go bounce off of each island. We had a command center. and We had signage all over the place for a command center. Now, this happened really quick here in Mexico, so you couldn't do that. But I would think you would have a GM or someone in charge out there on a microphone talking to people and bringing them all in and gathering them. Okay. Um, I have another video that I'm going to show that I have to set up. So... But first, Mexico is Latin America's most visited tourist destination, bringing in $20 billion annually. However, 2017 was the country's most murderous year ever, with more than 23,000 people killed. Tourist areas that were once considered off-limits to gangs and drug cartels are now plagued by violence. Special correspondent Danny Gold has the first of two reports and begins tonight on the streets of Cancun where the murder rate has doubled in the past year. This is not the part of Cancun that tourists travel thousands of miles to see. Officer Alejandro Rodriguez commands this heavily armed unit of Cancun's municipal police. His team is working to stop a soaring homicide. In 2017, more than 205 people have been murdered here. Homicidios. Homicides are our priority. We know that there are gangs who are probably fighting over territory. In places where there have been homicides, there are patrols with special officers. In 2006, 
Mexico began an aggressive campaign of targeting the heads of drug cartels. Kingpins went to jail or were killed, but an estimated 80,000 others were also killed by organized crime since the strategy against cartels began. The fallout of the campaign can still be seen on the streets of Cancun, where fractured gangs fight bloody battles for control. We want to prevent any crimes like homicide or theft. We also want to detect and identify people who carry weapons and drugs. Cancun has never seen this much bloodshed. In August alone, the deadliest month of the year, a record 38 people were murdered here. A few miles away from the armored patrol, Cancun looks vastly different. Here, resorts and tourists mingle with white sand and crystal blue water. But looks can be deceptive. Last August, the U.S. State Department issued a travel advisory for the state of Quintana Roo, where Cancun is located. The warning stated, turf battles between criminal groups have resulted in violent crime. The notice didn't deter Andre and Michelle vacationing from Los Angeles. Have you seen anything that would leave you like a little, little fearful thus far? No, I haven't felt un unsafe at all. 42 miles down the beach, another tourist hotspot, Playa del Carmen, is also under the same advisory. I sent him the notice once I got it on my phone, but everything was already booked, so we just figured mine as well. Brett and Alyssa Bohan came here from Michigan for their honeymoon. We've never felt like we were in any danger, I don't think. Alejandro Stolman specializes in analyzing security risks in Mexico. So much of the, of the violence that we're seeing in Cancun, as opposed to other places, takes place in the periphery of the, of the city, also in the periphery of, the, of Playa del Carmen. As crime has jumped to record highs, occupancy rates at hotels in Cancun and Playa del Carmen have mostly held steady. Stolman doesn't think that will change, even though murders are at an all-time high. You will see uh, uh, an upward trend in, in tourism, and that is likely to change the crime. Rates that we're seeing in Cancun and Playa del Carmen are still very low compared to what is happening around the country. The area's violence has rarely put vacationers in danger, even though some tourists come here to buy drugs from the same gangs that are making the state more violent. When there is demand for drugs, there is also violence, and Mexico worries the new crime wave could scare tourists off. <clears throat> so it's taking the threat seriously. Officer Francisco Viteron is patrolling Playa del Carmen's top tourist market. He and his partner, both officers in Mexico's federal police, have just arrived here. We are all working to apply different strategies to try to combat every form of violence. The public and even my bosses have the same concern. They gave us orders and tips on how to have a stronger presence here. The need for heavy security also stretches into the neighborhoods of Playa del Carmen that tourists often don't see. We rode along with Officer Alvaro Sanchez Jimenez from the Playa del Carmen police. Jimenez insists that the city is not dangerous and no criminal gangs run here. No tales grupos. There aren't groups here. There are people who come here and identify how lovely it is here. The people who come here come because it's a beautiful city and it's safe too. If anything happens, it's really sporadic. It's all under control though. But the same day that we met Officer Jimenez, a body was found not far from where we threw these images. The following day, there was a banner threatening local police and government officials. Ya no tengo la seguridad. We don't have any security. It's not safe for us to be a family here. We met Fabiola Jara outside of Cancun's General Hospital. Y un carro. Suddenly a car came close to us. I didn't recognize it. Two people came out of the car and started shooting. In that moment, I was screaming. I kept asking why. Why? I saw that my son had been shot in his leg. Eric, Fabiola's 13-year-old son, had his leg shattered from the bullet. When we visited the hospital, Eric's room was protected by a guard, and we were not allowed to enter. Do you have any faith in the, in the judicial system here or in the police force? I don't know. Right now, I don't know. But I should, right? They're guarding us. We should trust them. The state's top prosecutor, Miguel Angel Hechsen, argues the rising crime and murder rate is a product of the increasing drug trade and a turf battle following the arrest of Don Aleti, prominent cartel leader. A la presencia de... The presence of such crime is due to the selling of drugs. It's not on a grand scale, but it is quite prominent still. There are groups fighting over having power to sell drugs here. People here search for peace and quiet, but because of this turf war, violence is growing. Hetchen argues Cancun's beauty is part of the problem. Since tourists are consumers, this also creates havoc. 
the drug lords immediately recognized them as revenue generators. Local journalist Pedro Concha says the system is rotten. The police are corrupt and criminal leaders are emboldened. El problema de corrupción. There's a lot of bribery. Quite often the leaders are ex-police officers or ex-military. They would probably earn $2,800 and suddenly a narco group offers them $28,000. There is a huge difference. In this way, many police officers become drug lords themselves. This basically encourages other officials to do the same. Fighting this is not easy. We met this former Cancun police officer who asked them to disguise his identity. He told me in Cancun, it's practically impossible to be an honest policeman. We see homicides every day on the street, in broad daylight, kidnapping, assaults, all in daylight now. This didn't happen before. The issue that every officer has is really just his own boss. The boss in charge of the operation will tell you directly to let someone go and ignore all evidence. We went out with the police last night. <clears throat> it seemed like they were well armed, they were well trained. Is that the reality? No. No, it's not the reality. The police haven't been trained entirely. There are some groups that have no tactical training. They're blindly sent to the scene and exposed to the crime. They also lack the right amount of ammunition. Sometimes they're only given six to eight rounds. That's all. This basically sets them up for death. He also accuses police of working with high-level criminals. <clears throat> the criminals ensure that the police cannot behave professionally. The police officers who don't respond to the criminals' demands are laid off. The police make a deal with the criminals that ensures disobedient officers will be fired. We've heard from people around here lots of accusations about corruption in the government um, and, and accusations that criminals have the impunity to act. Uh, how do you respond to those allegations? Para lograr abatir esa impunidad. To combat this type of impunity, the government here is being as transparent as possible. We are about to launch the anti-corruption program that will name all the perpetrators, and our office will have much better access to offenders. It's hard to choose between right and wrong sometimes, but we are trying. But for now, in this increasingly violent paradox, the crime rate, the homicide rate, and the hotel occupancy rate are showing no signs of slowing down. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Danny Gold in Cancun, Mexico. Okay, so um, that was just talking about Cancun, Mexico, but we know in certain other areas like Las Vegas and those have drug problems too. And some hotels where I, I worked as the director of operations and food and beverage manager, um, you got to watch your bars because um, prostitution and drug workers will set up in your bars. And if they know you as a manager are not watching or keeping tabs or um, they'll set up, uh, there's one facility I worked at in Hartford, Connecticut, where high-end escorts would work out of there. And it was due to the fact that the hotel was owned by an ex-mafioso, and then my company bought it, and they still had the same practices. When my company got in, we hired a security company, an undercover security that eventually cleaned up the whole hotel and cleaned up the area. But that area was common knowledge and common practice. And this was a four-star resort uh, associated with a convention center. So these are some of the things that you have to be aware of being uh, a manager. Um, I have one more video that I want to show you on, on the hotel security. And then I want to talk about next week's case study. And then that's it for this evening. The reason why I'm putting Cancun and using that is because it's not just Cancun. We have the same type of drug issues and uh, prostitution, those type of things in our hotels here in Florida. And um, we gotta make sure that we uh, all understand that it's, you have to be aware of this as a manager, assistant GM, director of security, whatever who you're working with, these are issues in our resorts and in, in our hotels. <clears throat> Did you know you can? Dream vacations turning into nightmares. The U.S. Department of State up. issuing an urgent travel advisory to Americans. You see it? As violence continues at popular tourist destinations like Cancun and Acapulco. Yeah, there were over 25,000 murders in Mexico last year with violent crime like kid.
Can you see it now? State issuing an urgent travel advisory to Americans as violence continues at popular tourist destinations like Cancun and Acapulco. Yeah, there were over 25,000 murders in Mexico last year with violent crime like kidnapping, carjacking, and robbery also on the rise. So how did these dream destinations become murder hotbeds? Joining us now is TravelPulse.com founder Mark Murphy. Thank you for joining us this morning. So give us an update on what's going on in Cancun from your so, perspective. So the State Department warning uh, in regards to Playa del Carmen was the latest thing the ferry. Turns out that was a political attack based on a former governor. So it's very isolated. They've now walked that back. And there are certain areas just like in New York City or I have a home down in New Jersey. I don't go hang out in the middle of Camden at 3 o'clock in the morning. You don't go to certain areas that you know are hotbeds for either gangs or drugs. And there are areas outside of the tourist zones themselves mm -hmm. that have that. Yeah. So that's what they want you to stay away from. Okay, so that's, and we're, we're talking about Cancun here, and, and obviously yeah. if you're a tourist, you're going into the resorts and you think that you're still reasonably safe. But let's look at another place like Acapulco. When I read this article earlier this week, I, I, I read some things that I didn't know, which is sure. it's just how popular it once was. It was yeah. a place where the Kennedys honeymoon. It's where the Clintons honeymoon. It was, it had, it, it it was yeah. the Rat Pack hung out there. Yeah, it yeah. had its heyday, and now today... It's deteriorated to the point where even in the resorts, you really can't go. And it's only really Mexicans that are going to Acapulco to vacation. You don't really hear people going there. Right. Well, and you, and you have to look at the, the, the factors. So airlift slowed down going into Acapulco. Cancun emerged as a destination because in those days, Cancun didn't even exist. Yeah. So Cancun was a new phenomenon. So they pulled for uh, to Cancun. They pulled to Los Cabos. So Acapulco got less airlift. When you have less less direct flights from the U.S., you can have a much tougher uh, way to get there mm -hmm. versus New York. You can fly nonstop right into Cancun. So right. Cancun is boom. There's almost 10 million people going into Cancun every year now. But, but I was going to ask, right. could that yeah. happen to Cancun? I, I don't think so, because number one, if you come into Cancun Airport, I was just there a couple of months ago, and I take 20 family members there every year for Christmas, yeah. and I did it again, and I'm going to do it again this year, despite the travel warnings, mm -hmm. because I had that experience on the ground. It is a safe destination. You get out of the plane, you go to a transfer, and you go to your resort. There are 1,000 mm -hmm. hotels and resorts in the Cancun Riviera Maya region, so there's tons of options, and you are very, if, if you go to those resorts, you'll find that there's a lot of security just to get into the resort, right. let alone to get, get to where the actual tourists are enjoying a vacation. So we do have some facts yeah. here, uh, just so people are at home can sure. you know, be up to speed and know what we're talking about. Over 25,000 murders in Mexico in 2017. 10 murder scenes investigated a day in Acapulco. Over 15 million tourists visited Mexico so far this year. So my question to you is, would you still advise people to go? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be in Mexico in the month of April. Right. So, so again, you have to look at the facts on the ground. Let's take New York City. We're sitting here in New York City. I am here. I have right. a home that's in New York City where I come from getaways, et cetera. And what do we have in the last four or five months? We had people getting run over on the West Side Highway. We had those terrorist attack. We had a bombing in the subway right down the street here in Times Square. We had the Times Square bomber. We had the Chelsea bombings. But we're not telling people to stay away from New York. And millions of people coming in every day for work, for leisure travel, so it's it's applying common sense to the actual problem, and you avoid it. it it's being aware. You got it, exactly. the situational awareness is but always this, key. It's, it's a little bit different because we're, we're not dealing with problems like a corrupted government and and and, and drug cartels buying out officials. And sure, doing. That. I mean that. That is a general issue that affects everybody. Well, now in New York, we don't have that problem. We can have isolated incidents. Of right? course, yeah. And, and that, is a, that is a problem, and the Mexican government has to address that because there is corruption, and they have to take care of that. What that's impacting, to be frank, are the locals. So when you say murders in Acapulco, murders in Cancun, it's not murders in the tourist areas. It's murders where the locals live. It might be 10, 15 miles away from where any tourist would ever venture, mm -hmm. and that's where it's happening. And I think the people that are being impacted by that corruption, by those drug cartels, are the Mexican nationals there, not tourists. Last year, 20 million Americans went to Mexico. How many had an issue? Right. And why are they why do they grow from the 15th, the most visited destination in the world, to number eight, literally in the last decade? So the numbers, the numbers are go both ways, to be frank. Mark Murphy, founder of travelpulse.com. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Green vacation. Okay, so uh, the reason why I show these videos is that um, <clears throat> you as managers, as the last video showed, there's going to be incidents in popular destinations, no matter where you work. 
So New York, Chicago, Boston, Las Vegas, Miami, there's always going to be some kind of incident. And your guests, even here in Palm Beach County, when they stay with you, that's their temporary residence. Uh, and they have to be in a safe, secure environment. So you have to make your hotel safe. So that first video we watched where all the people were in the lobby, there was really no one taking control of the situation, bringing people in, getting them off the beach, closing the doors. Uh, so it tells me there was not a risk assessment plan. A lot of these hotels, the general managers are international. They're from all over the world. They're not just from Mexico, Cancun areas, they're international. And so you have to be aware of that. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is next week's, um, um, this week's case study. <clears throat> okay, so this, our lecture tonight was on the building structure and safety and security. So this is a situation of a brand new hotel built in 1980. And it was a walkway from the hotel to the conference center. Well, it collapsed. People were killed, people were injured. The case study is who's responsible? Higher Regency, the contractor, the management company, the engineers, so you're gonna read through the case and then you're gonna make some decisions because you're gonna find out that it's not in black and white because the hotel was pushing to get open. We wanted that hotel open. So read through it thoroughly. Um, there's some questions uh, at the end. You can see 